It's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's Superhero Slate. It's a modern podcast where we talk about everything that's great. Like movies, TV, superheroes. It's Superhero Slate. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, so let's talk it all out. My name is Chris Dillard. And my name is Mike Royer. And this week, we're out purchasing our Ant-Man tickets, and you should be doing the same. Cha-ching! It's going to be big. It's the, it's, it's the Friday after Valentine's Day, so you, you take your loved ones, you know, buy them all tickets, load them up, and go watch Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Uh, the Mandalorian teases his return this week, Mike, and mm-hmm. I believe one of the biggest trailers for a, star, a non-Star Wars movie in a long time, so we'll talk about that. The Last of Us debuted on HBO Max. I know this is this is the show you've been hyped for for a very, mm-hmm. very, very long time. I literally am fresh off watching this episode, <laughs> like <laughs> not even an hour ago uh, did, did I wrap it up and more. And yeah, boy, we, is it Sunday like you just... I, we literally, this is the second <laughs> time we've done the intro because I messed up the first one, so... Uh. Yeah, Chris uh, Chris was at a uh, theme park a couple of weeks ago. I'm fresh off of a theme park just mm-hmm. about an hour ago, so yeah. we are coming in hot, but just like every Sunday, we're here, folks. That's right. Right? You know, last week we recorded just before The Last of Us uh, show premiered, so now we're... A little a little late to the party but I the that's the that's the great thing about the non binge model right last of us will continue to feed us for the next eight to ten weeks eight, I don't eight, remember how many it's episodes nine, it's it nine episodes uh, so we have two more months uh, gotcha. of the last of us yeah, that'll, so we that'll, have that'll cue us up to I mean a lot of stuff starting in the spring so we'll actually have a lot going on I guess in parallel across the board that's two yeah. Pedro Pascal shows at the same time Mike I just <laughs> he's all this. over the place yeah oh. so if, if you've yet to uh, catch up with the last of us uh, no biggie we're gonna talk about it in all of its spoiler glory at the end of the episode like we do with all of our TV reviews so mm-hmm. no worry about avoiding that yeah. but stay tuned Yes, absolutely. So let's go ahead and jump in to not the news, but what I'm going to go ahead and pitch this week because um, this is the third iteration of um, a Kickstarter I backed from called from a game called Marvel United, Mike. And and you, I send you this all the time whenever the first one came out and the second one because they have the little it's kind of chibi esque artwork and and mm-hmm. style for all the figures and the cards. And I know that you know you 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 mentioned like oh that's pretty cool you know for artwork in a game to to kind of embrace that for this and this week the third they're calling it season three is coming out and it's called the marvel united multiverse and the multiverse it adds some new features such as items for your characters because before you were just the character not the item right so if you're playing as possibly like a jane foster thor or um a, a captain carter captain america who i believe are both in this you know you get their items now like the shield or the hammer and they can do stuff on the board. But one of the other cool things is right out the gate, they, you get a, one of the um, sets is Galactus. You get a very, very tall Galactus figure that you get to play with. And um, four of the, the Heralds of Galactus in that, which I thought was really cool for them to, you know, finally, you know, we've had the Fantastic Four, we've had Silver Surfer, to, to just go ahead and give us a big Galactus set across the board out the gate for this. Yeah. I'm just yeah. imagining you cross-legged, you know, on the floor in your living room mm-hmm. playing with your little figures, mm-hmm. and, you know, your wife is making you some, like, chicken fingers and some yeah. macaroni and cheese. Uh, uh, hopefully it's dino-shaped chicken nuggets, one of my mm. favorites, uh, with that with that mac and cheese. And this is really cool because, you know, what I, I think one of the the cool parts but the disappointing parts is it's a, up to a four-player game, um, and you play in a circle, like, around it. So it's, like, perfect for playing around a table, right? Because you mm-hmm. – the, the, the game board's a circle, but, like, the the problem is it's only four people. So if you have five plus, you're like, well, we can't really play Marvel United, despite how cool this is. Um, one of the other cool things before, you know, I jump in this, if you, if you want to kickstart it, it's on Kickstarter. That you can get the core set. I believe you can get them on Amazon for, like, $10 now because, you know, game's several years old. Um, but the, they have added, a, an Inhumans set that you can add on to this. And, you know, uh, Mike, you know me, I love the Inhumans. Um, so I was very excited to see a standalone Inhumans box that you can get with this one as well, or just buy it by itself, I guess it's, you don't have to get the full set. So I thought that was really cool, but you know, the, 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 the fun thing about Kickstarters is every time they reach new stretch goals, right? We get a new figure and I think they're up to like 20, 22, 23 extra figures so far. 
a lot of characters I've never heard of before. Um, so uh, um, they're starting to stretch, you know, out that's, there a little that's bit. That's saying something for you too. Yeah, yeah the, the and I believe they're they're kind of like in the X Men realm, like X Men space realm. And I'm like, okay, if if you want to get, uh, I think his name's Chad C H apostrophe O D. I'm like, sure, go right ahead. I'm sure there's a, <laughs> a fan or two of him out there. Um, but you know, it, it's. The sets, are, the quality is always there. The sets are cool. The little, the figures, you know, having something tangible to play with is really cool. Uh, so um, I'm backing that. And I, I recommend anyone who is looking for a two, two, I guess one to four player game, uh, check out the original that you can pick up, like sit on Amazon for like ten dollars or, or less. It's pretty pretty affordable. But um, yeah, jump into to your exclusive sneak peek. One of a few people who got to go to Super Nintendo World Early, Mike. Tell us about this. Yeah, yeah, so there's a soft opening now. The official opening for the park is February 17th at Universal's Universal Studios Hollywood out here in Los Angeles. And this is kind of a special opening because it's the first time a Nintendo is opening a park in the United States. There is a park currently in Japan. That's the first place it opened a few years ago. So now this is the first time it opens up in the States. Correct mm-hmm. me if I'm wrong, Chris, but it is coming to Florida still, I believe. Mm. It's just not open yet. Not 100% sure. I'm going to but... have to look this up. Uh, it says, originally, but the Epic Universe, which will house Florida's version of Super Nintendo Land, will open mm-hmm. in 2025. Yes. Yeah, so we finally have this opened up. And this was exciting, at least for me, because every time you go to Universal Studios out here, for the long time when you're taking the, the trip down the many, many escalators to the bottom part of Universal Studios Park, you just see this endless construction that has just been happening for years and years and years. I believe the first phase of the destruction was just getting rid of whatever was there. And then maybe they didn't know what was going to go in there yet. Then all of a sudden Mario starts to get built up. So I got to go to a soft opening of it which was pretty cool, and uh, right now there's really only two things to really do, two large attractions there, which one of them is the ride, which is Mario Kart Bowser's Challenge, and then the other one isn't even a ride, it's just the Toadstool Cafe, it's just like the restaurant in the area. So uh, check it out today. The theming is very, very strong, very cool. Like, it's, it's literally oozing Mushroom Kingdom in and out of its pores everywhere. Um, I'm actually surprised it's called Super Nintendo World because it it is 100% Mario World right now. There's no other Super Nintendo property that I can see, but I have heard that there is a rumored like Donkey Kong like roller coaster that is to be built and put in at some point in time. Don't know when that's happening, but you know, theoretically that would be Super Nintendo and not Mario, but it would definitely be Mario adjacent, right? It would fit right at home. So I was sending pictures to you in our group chat uh, when I was in the line for uh, Mario Kart Bowser's Challenge. And the, the line is, like, themed very, very well. Like, you know, whenever you enter one of these rides or one of these worlds that are new for the very first time, you almost don't want to go single rider. You know, you don't want, like, an express fast pass into the ride. You kind of want to see mm-hmm. the line. But, you know, you don't. You want the line to go quickly, right? So luckily we had that opportunity. And there are some pretty cool parts, especially once you get into Bowser's Cast. Castle. There's like these cool, like, like you were at CES just the other week and you were telling yeah. me about these screens that were three dimensional 3d that you could see without glasses. And they have those in line, which was really cool. There was like a little like factory belt of these bu- bu- uh, Bob-ombs, right? That's what they're called? Yeah, bob um, yep. Being, And then there's also shy guys up there and like some booze and ghosts up in the corner of, on some screen. So I was like, oh, this is really cool. At first, I didn't even notice them. So I was like, oh, this is what it's like. And then I tried to imagine it like a hundred times larger. Like, oh, is this how James Cameron wants me to see like maybe the next two or three Avatar movies? Um, so that was fun to see in person. And the, the physical, like, props from Mario, like, realized uh, in real life is really cool, too. It's just a really fun aesthetic. Um, and the same thing with the Toadstool Cafe. Uh, like, all of the seats kind of have these chunky feeling with, like, these Toadstool adornments on the top. And we were in a booth that had, like, a fake window that was a TV screen. And there was, like, toads running around. And uh, everything feels very kind of, like, video game adjacent 
graphics like they were it's almost like a uh, ported from a switch if you will so the, the music I, in some of the videos you, like i was immediately thinking of like the newer mario games when, yeah when you were i was games. almost kind of hoping though i was like you know this is like a brand new theme park i get that everyone's you know super familiar with like the video games but like i al- almost was kind of hoping for like maybe like some 4k 60 frames per sep per second like hdr textures you know just to make it a little bit more special you know these are visuals you you can only get if you go to the park but you know uh i i kept i kept it moving through the lines and through the queues and really the only thing left i have to review because there's lots of other little things around in the park that we didn't have time to do because we only had a two-hour time slot and they have like a lot of mini games around the park similar to how if you go to like a galaxy's edge there's like little mini games you can do with like your magic band yeah on the walls. Say, did, did you get a power band the power up um I, I didn't get a power band but i i there was like rumors through the grapevine that there might be power bands that you could get maybe for free if you're Mm -hmm. lucky enough in the soft opening but we were you know we were we were bleeding daylight trying to get through this so maybe next time when we go back but i did see people with them and they're hitting the question blocks but the only thing i really have to review here beyond like the theming and the aesthetics which i would say are probably like nine out of ten would be the mario kart bowser's challenge ride and this was kind of exciting for me because I didn't know anything about it. I didn't do any any research. I had some friends that live out here that got to go to the park uh, yesterday, you know, and they were posting Instagram stories, and I was like, skip, 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 skip. I don't want to see. I'm going to be there tomorrow. Um, so I knew it was like a, a, you know, Mario Kart, but what does that even mean? So I, I found out as we go through the line that there are four persons to a cart, you know, but it's kind of tiered like a movie theater, right? So if you're stuck in the back seat, you still got a really good vantage point. It's not that big of a deal. But what you do before you get onto the cart, you know how some rides are 3D and you get 3D glasses ahead of time? Yeah. Uh, this is a ride that they give you like this band that has a little Mario cap on it that you strap around your head. And then they say, this band will be where you magnetically stick your AR visor to once you get into the car. So I was like, okay. So I step into the cart and then this visor is like uh, manually wired into the car that you're in. So it's feeding data to the headset. So you snap the headset onto your thing that snapped that snapped and like screwed and tightened onto your head, similar to kind of like a VR headset strap. Then you kind of, kind of have these big like AR goggles that are over your head and you move your head to kind of look around and like aim where you shoot your little uh, shells and whatnot. And um, I think maybe you're shooting something else. I don't know. It was kind of hard to tell. The The biggest the biggest downside of this ride is going to be the AR glasses because you have this really cool physical space that your cart is moving through with these like cool um, uh, three-dimensional objects. And there's also big giant screens that are kind of molded into the scenery with things happening in it. And then you have this goggle in front of you that's showing you like very low grade graphics, right? You're kind of getting like the screen door effect on your AR, um, elements. So you'll do something where you'll come across the physical element on the ride that kind of has like an empty space in it. And they attempt to fill that space with, a uh, with a graphic graphical element on your AR goggles, but like there's a little bit of like placement jitter, right? So like if you look and don't move your head, it kind of works, but then the cart's moving. So everything in your screen is kind of vibrating on where it might be placed in the real world. So like they're trying to have like these carts like fly in front of you to try to give you the feeling of racing, but I never really got the feeling that I was actually in a Mario Kart race. If anything, I was just struggling to figure out what the heck was going on because there's like buttons on your steering wheel that you know you can shoot the shells and then you move your head to aim but also there's like a steering element that I feel like they overemphasize in the like instructional video before you get on the ride like oh make sure you're steering in the right direction but I I couldn't tell if I was steering wrong or right and there's four people in the car right so it's just like it's not like I'm the one turning the car no one's turning the car you're just trying to almost do like a quick time event to this arrow that pops up on your screen and then at the very end you get like a prize point so 
I was a little disappointed yeah. in the ride, and I would almost rather ride it without the AR glasses. Like, I don't know if that's a possibility. I don't know if there's a way to kind of like uh, make the ride work without them. But uh, it made me think back to the Harry Potter ride that's at the very same park that opened. And when it opened, it had 3D glasses on it. And then eventually they ditched the 3D glasses, and they're just like, everyone's getting too sick on this ride with these. So this is a little bit of a different scenario. You're not going to get sick on this ride at all. But yeah, I was just, it was kind of like a mixed bag, right? Because I had never experienced AR goggles before. So I I was kind of excited to see what they were like and it was still kind of a cool magic trick right but i just don't think it melded well with the yeah, ride so, so so i'm watching a video know. of it online uh with the with the ar right um like you mentioned mm-hmm. and honestly um because the you like the ar is limited to the glass you're looking through like i mm-hmm. can see like how you can like if it goes off of the screen, it just disappears, right? Yeah. And, and that's kind of, to me, taking me out of this experience because I wish it was like, maybe if they put the AR glass, like maybe your cart was in a bubble, right? And the AR glass was around the cart that you're in and you could just look around full 360. I think that would be fantastic. Yeah. It's just there. there's too much freedom of movement within the ride. So it just kind of felt like, I was trying to experience a ride and somebody just kept trying to shove pop-up ads in front of my face, but that were there like Mario Karts instead. So I don't know, maybe somebody else had more of a fun time. I would still recommend it, right? I mean, come on, you're not going to be able to get to this park any other place until it opens up down in Florida or you're going to have to get a flight yeah. all the way over to Tokyo, right? The theming is super cool. But then I also, I was talking with my wife when we were leaving and I was like, sometimes I do need to remind myself though, I am judging this through the lens of like a mid 30 year old man who has experienced like high level theme parks before. I'm like very into all of this stuff and uh, I'm judging it just a little too harshly. So sometimes Mm -hmm. I try to remember like, (laughs) what would it be like if I was 12 years old on vacation? So I didn't literally live out here. And I'd never experienced like a theme park before or a little anything like this. And I was on a family trip, so yeah, I think I'm just being a little too a little I, I, too harsh on it. Look, <laughs> I, I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with you based on your footage and and photos from before and today. I am I am whelmed. I am not overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not underwhelmed. I'm just whelmed at at what I'm looking at. Right. I think it's the theming is fantastic. It's there, but like it's not enough to like I I want to be doing something. Right when I'm there, Uh I I want to be interacting and and expecting the highest quality kind of experience, like you mentioned. And and everything I've looked at, I'm like, this is fine. I don't need to rush out there and get see it right away. I I can wait until you know the hype has died down a bit and probably go and and be okay to experience it that way. But like, I'm I'm same as you. I'm like I'm just like meh. This this is cool, but like it's not life changing for me. I guess maybe I don't know if you feel the same way. I would recommend. If you get a chance to do the Mario Kart arcade games, I don't know if you've ever raced on those. Those are fantastic games mm. to race in. But um, no, that, that's that's cool. Anything? I mean, it, what is, is your biggest takeaway? What what's um? I guess the best character you saw there would be my question for you. Well, they only had one walk around character while I was there, and just asterisks on this whole thing it was a soft opening so who knows exactly what gets turned on or turned off once the public is finally uh, you know welcomed in uh but there was a princess peach walking around that was really nice. really cool and uh my, my wife uh, specifically said take a video of that thing up there and i'm like what thing she's like that 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 goofy little uh, uh, ball thingy, and I was like, oh, the thing that is kind of like it's like the three tiered cactus character, yeah. um, and it was like it was pretty cool. So I did take a video of it. So all the little cool animatronics moving around in the scenery, it, it's a cool vibe. They, and even you, like I, the the sconces for Bowser's castle yeah. were cool. And I sent you a picture of those. Yeah, I, I like I like the Yoshi. Uh, on, I guess on the open mm-hmm. world like because it's got the you know Mario's known for his big hills right in the background and you know mm-hmm. they, they build the hills up yoshi looked pretty cool to me i, I thought that was a, a nice little touch but i'm a big fan of yoshi if i knew mario kart i'm always doing yoshi so. Mm-hmm. so well thanks mike for telling us about this wide opening for for super nintendo world which asterisk super mario world uh, <laughs> only right now so yeah maybe look at like a smash brothers thing going or you oh know, that would be sick i i think you know Call me biased. Pokemon would be fun. Oh, yeah. When I was in the queue for the Mario Kart ride, I just kept thinking, oh, man, it would be so cool to be in, like, a themed 
Pokemon ride yeah. queue, like with just little little Pokemon popping up around the corners and mm-hmm. stuff. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I mean, you've you've played on the uh, Toy Story Mania rides, right at Disney. The mm-hmm. ones, uh, imagine like that, but you're flinging Pokeballs instead yeah. of like stuff and everything. I think those rides are fun, but. Anyway, we're gonna get our, we're gonna get our hopes up. So let's jump into let's jump into the news here. Uh, first and foremost, Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania, as is tradition, a week after the trailer, they dropped the tickets. So you can go ahead and get your tickets for this February seventeenth or sixteenth if you're going on the Thursday release. Um, and then also because of that there's a lot more information coming about this movie is moving into the press cycle. Uh, Paul Rudd has called it the Ragnarok of the Ant Man franchise, and that's pretty exciting. I think. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, that's high praise. Everybody loves everyone. Everybody agrees. Right. Yeah. Ragnarok is the best, most entertaining Th- Thor movie. So, yeah. Thor one. OK. Thor two. Not my favorite movie. Probably my least favorite movie to watch when we're doing Marvel rewatches. Uh, Ragnarok c- totally flips the script. And I, I, I'm, I'm glad to see that, you know, they're seeing it that way as well over there. And a couple of images came out here. Um, they were they were on thing, but I want, the only one I want to pull out here is there's a picture of Michael Douglas as Hank Pym with a gun that looks very similar to Star Lord's gun from from Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, oh yeah, or if you were oblivious, it kind of looks like a gun out of Halo as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's it's the two things are um you know I guess the U shaped and you you hold mm-hmm. the the bottom of the U shape, but it looks very similar to star lords except it's up like star lords is upside down the other direction so mm-hmm. um i don't i'm not gonna say there's a connection between them but wouldn't be surprised either one way if they're like yeah we got we got element guns down here we do the same thing so yeah um, really 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 curious uh the the rules and kind of how the quantum realm works in general right it looks mm-hmm. like outer space but it ain't it, it ain't it, outer it's, space it's inner space kind of like the <laughs> yeah. other direction so yeah, absolutely. Very, very excited to dive into that. So, um, Ant Man Wasp, we will, that's, is that our next review? I think it's our next review, right? That's the next Yeah, I think release. so. And then um, I think it would be Shazam after that. Yep, yep. So, Quantum Mania is uh, dropping and again kicks off phase five of the MCU with the return of uh, Jonathan Majors as Kang or a variant of He Who Remains. Uh, let's jump into Jar- Ar- not Jarmer. Armor Wars. Uh, there's some <laughs> Jarmer Wars. Jarmer Wars. The the where you have they really over tighten the jars and they just can't get them open. <laughs> um, Armor Wars will apparently be happening this movie because of Space Secret Invasion. So Secret Invasion leads into Armor Wars. Now mm. we do know Secret Invasion is our first um, series being released this year by Marvel on Disney Plus. So we're anxiously awaiting the date. I suppose. Uh, so maybe they'll take that for the Super Bowl. I think that'd be a great Super Bowl ad um, mm-hmm. to give us that date. But um, rumor is governments will start using the Stark tech or hit the Stark Iron Man suits to fight the Kree and Scroll because of Secret Invasion. But um, Rhodey, obviously, War Machine will step in to stop that because he doesn't. He wants to carry on Iron Man's legacy, Tony's legacy of not using his technology mm-hmm. for war. So yeah. that sounds very, fairly normal. Yeah, I mean, it's a. I think it's a pretty uh, easy way to tell the story, not in a bad way, but it makes the most sense, right? You know, if your humanity that is just your only hope is just a handful of super powered or tactically advanced beings that you can't really control in any way, you just kind of, kind of hope they have a good faith. Uh, yeah, yeah, it might be a, if you were like a military general who's like quickly losing power, you yeah. know, over and over people that invade Earth. Like, yeah, you might need an army of armored suits. It, th- this would be a great opportunity to bring back um, Justin Hammer, right, played by Sam Rockwell. Mm-hmm. Maybe redeem him a little bit from his Iron Man two um, uh, showing. But what I really want to see out of this movie, Mike, and I think you'll agree, is if the other governments are using Iron Man suits, right, or Iron Man S suits. They need to be like super different. Like I want every one of them to be distinctly different visually and not just a recolored Iron Man suit over and over again. Yeah, I mean, I know this is too goofy, but uh, I think of uh, the G Gundam series where yep. they had all of these Gundam fighters from different countries and they were just kind of like oozing in like Miss America pageant style, yeah. right? Like if you were the Gundam from America, it was a giant well, robot with a cowboy hat on. <laughs> yeah, and I'm going to lean uh, back into the more like, um, I guess, serious fair and do Pacific Rim. Right, all mm-hmm. the Jaegers represented different countries or different regions, mm-hmm. and they were all uniquely different. Like you know, some had two, um, like one of them I think had two heads and like four arms and stuff like that. So like, if they're going to be doing this, 
like lean into the visuals of the suits being drastically yeah. different. Yeah, and I like that in in a sense of like you were saying, not even just like the aesthetics of the suit, but yeah, why does one have to have normal human like features? Maybe one could have like a really built out, cool like grappling arm that mm-hmm. it's like doesn't look uh, humanoid at all. Yeah. That would be rad. Yeah, like like War Machine, he's always got that big Gatling gun on his shoulder, right? Like that's his mm-hmm. distinct fit feature. He is a literary war machine full of guns and bullets and, and, and missiles and. Um, you know, we, we didn't get a lot of his super suit in, in, in game, uh, despite the fact we like saw him pop up out of the, the ground with rocket on it later in the, the movie. But like, I think there's a huge, huge opportunity to just be, be not, not crazy, but like, just be cool, like have some fun with it and really step outside of that, that zone, uh, a little bit. I know, I know they never showed off any of the stealth suits in the Iron Man movies. So there might be an opportunity for like a. You know, some espionage Iron Man suits that are more mm. visible. That'd be pretty fun. So, yeah, I, I just, you know, honestly, the biggest news out of here is when are we getting Secret Invasion, right? When When is Don Cheadle going to come back and get a, 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 he got an award for what, what, or nominated for like, was it a Golden Globe or something? For his like, <laughs> like 45 yeah, for seconds in like, yeah. Falcon Winter Soldier. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so bring it back in. Let's, let's check that out. And spinning off of that, you know, talking about Falcon and Soldier, uh, Captain America, New World Order. Um, you know, we talked about the Serpent Society last week. Well, apparently they will be introduced in Captain America, New World Order first. Kind of leading credence that theory we posited about them possibly being like the second movie villains, like overall, mm-hmm. um, for for Sam Wilson. And then um, the character Diamondback has been... Um, will be the the first confirmed member of this. And this is not the same Diamondback that we had in uh, Luke Cage, right? Because they had the Cottonmouth and Diamondback as the two snake-themed villains there, even though they weren't really oh, snake-themed. Oh, so, I do kind of remember that, yeah. Yeah, so they're going to lean a little <laughs> bit more into the, the snake, uh, I guess, um, I guess, trope or whatever we're yeah. saying here. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I would imagine uh, Serpent Society is going to be kind of more in line of like, hydra in a way they weren't literally yeah. hydras it was just kind of more of like a metaphorical like marching order you know yeah yeah hey hey uh, do, you, do you have a favorite kind of snake uh, if not you better pick one real quick because that's what your mm-hmm. entire fighting style and costume is going to be based on so it's again i think there were some of them were, again like i said earth minus heroes is where my i had the most interaction with them they, they kept coming back and i think that they had some really cool it sounds like one was like a con, like a boa constrictor and the other one was you know like a more of a poison one so so on and so forth but you know honestly diamondback and in, in this comment this image i have in our show notes you can check that out doesn't even look like a snake she just literally looks she had a bright pink suit and some diamonds on it so um i think she's the leader but yeah we'll keep you guys posted on that i think you know, this movie and you know again introducing harrison ford as uh thunderbolt ross has, has got some good stuff going for it, the return of the leader um a whole bunch going on here so we'll we'll keep you guys posted as they move through that Agatha Covenant of Chaos is currently filming, Mike. They are they are off the ground doing scenes in a mall. We got Catherine Hahn and um, I don't know this other kid's name. It's Joe something. Uh, we don't know who he's playing. Um, but they are filming in a quote unquote Westview mall. Westview is the town where Agatha was put under spell by um, the Scarlet Witch before we left here. And it looks like they're having... A lovely uh, luncheon, possibly '90s, based on that cup style. Do you see that art on that cup? The blue, and yeah, purple possibly. Steel? So, anything yeah, you can make I, out of this? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm curious how much the show stays in Westfield, like um, in Westview. I, Westview is more entertaining to me, right? When it's bewitched and it's going through like different timelines, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't imagine you stay there for an entire another show. The, the, the town itself wasn't special in a way, right? Um, now, that being said, like I always say, good writing can make anything entertaining. So I'm not mm-hmm. saying no, but like similar to how I don't want to stay on desert planets in Star Wars if I don't have to, I, I would imagine she uh, she once she maybe kind of breaks her spell or her, you know, yeah. whatever is controlling her, she will be off across the the country, maybe back into like Salem, you know. Right. Well, I guess the thing is, and and the my one of my biggest complaints about WandaVision, right, is Agatha, Agatha just happened to be in the right town at the right time when Wanda had her breakdown, right, like to just to be there. So 
I think there possibly could be a way to explain that in this show. Like, hey, we are in Westview because of X reason. Now, I agree with you. She doesn't need to stay there, but, like, maybe we will find out there was a reason she stayed in that town or was there to begin with because maybe it's a, I don't know, a source for dark energy. I don't know. But, um, but yeah, like I said, I, there's no, that other than that town, you know, having, um, you know, all the people being under a spell, right, for a while and being in pain, there's real no reason for them to be there. They could literally go anywhere else in the world. Um, along the way so um i'm also fe- feeling and, and, and we, we don't have to dive into too much after wanda died or supposedly died and and dr strange is when her spell broke on agatha mm-hmm. i think is what we're gonna find and maybe so, that's what happens at this scene she's sitting at the table just having a normal day and then all of a sudden she snaps and the, the spell is gone she's like why am i in this mall drinking these cups with this dude i don't know we'll figure it out but yeah check out that photo it's in our show notes uh, also in our show notes, you can find the uh, newest or I guess latest trailer for the season three of The Mandalorian mm-hmm. dropped on Monday during the NFL wildcard playoff games. Um, a fun trailer. I, I, I'm going to be honest to me, Mike, this felt safe, like a safe trailer, right? Like, mm-hmm. hey, here are the cool Mandalorians with all the colorful outfits. Here is Grogu and the Mandalorian doing stuff in their spaceship. Uh, you know, here's Carl Weathers. He's he's the president of or, or mayor of whatever city he's in at the moment. Um, so I, I felt like it played it like you know, hey, here's here's the usual suspects, right? What you expect out of the Mandalorian show, and then they did throw in some cool shots of Mandalore and Coruscant as well. Mm-hmm. I thought, but you know, um, I, I didn't, I couldn't really get a lot out of it. But you know, that's not bad. I know we know more is coming, right? Like we know, yeah. It didn't. It didn't have that screen grab moment that I'm kind of always looking for. You know, when these new trailers come out, uh, when I'm thinking about talking about on the show, um, and it almost kind of swelled at the very end, where I thought like, oh, maybe there'll be like one last like shot of a new character reveal or something mm-hmm. at the end. The, of the, the Praetorian I, I, guards or something cool. We yeah, we and that about. just and that just didn't come. So yeah, we are just now we just I feel like we're waiting, <laughs> waiting for the show to drop. Yeah, in season three, I believe is that March first. Is that what I I last saw? I it's on this trailer. Um, I need to to do better on my notes here because I didn't March first. It's March first, so yep. Um, but you know, uh, this has also been confirmed to have an eight, eight episode season yet again. Um, it's, and it'll feature you know the usual suspect director directors yet Rick, uh, Rick uh, Famuyiwa, Rachel Morrison, Lee Isaac Chung, Carl Weathers, Peter Ramsey, and Bryce Dallas Howard. Yeah, Peter Ramsey is really cool, though, and I really like this announcement because Peter Ramsey was one of the co-directors for the first Spider-Verse movie, and I think this is really awesome because Dave Filoni comes from an animation background, so I love that he's just like, yeah, I'm looking for directors. They don't have to be live-action directors. Heck, Mm -hmm. half of the stuff that makes it to Disney Plus is getting touched up by some sort of animated visual effect anyway, so I don't understand why an animation director can't be in here behind the camera anyway, so I'm looking forward to seeing what that Peter Ramsey episode is like, so that's a really cool announcement he and and just a reminder he also has one for ahsoka he was hired as one of the directors for ahsoka as well so um he he's really getting you know his his, his feet wet and i, I mm-hmm. did pull him up here um again uh looking at his his history for um director you know seven eight movies but his history as a storyboard artist uh goes on for for days yeah um, he's got something going on at netflix too because uh there's a netflix office not too far from my place and um I was uh, running over to the store one day, and I just I recognized the guy because I follow him on Twitter, so I'm familiar with what his face looks like. I saw the dude walking down the sidewalk right outside the Netflix building. I'm just like, hey, you got something going on over there, and I almost I almost rolled down my window and yelled at him, but <laughs> I'm sure he doesn't get cat called that often from from the road. Yeah, that'd be that'd be that'd be pretty funny. Uh, uh, he's got Lost Ollie over there. Um, it was a show on Netflix. Have you seen that? An animated oh. show. Have not heard of it. Okay, it, it's about a lost rabbit toy Ollie and finds himself lost and found at an antique shop. Sounds like Toy Story Four. What? Just reading, saying <laughs> that out loud. Um, but you know, it's uh, narrated by Jonathan Groff, so maybe he was following up with uh, doing more of that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I think that's great. I think you know, again, I, I don't have a problem with the Mandalorian show, right? You know, you know is where we kind of started to to feel rough was around the Boba Fett show, right? All the sand, all the the usual, you know 
going back to the same places over and yeah. over again. So having these people in there be fine, uh, fine by me um, at the end of the day. So check out that trailer if you haven't, and um, get ready to return to that. That'll be our again our second um, Pedro Pascal show going on at the same time. He he has mm-hmm. just taken over everything we're, we're we're talking about these days. Uh, let's shift gears into the DC universe and um this is an article uh, i guess uh possibly i think maybe on twitter where james gunn has gone on about you know everyone's asking who's going to be superman who's going to be superman who's going to be playing these roles in your new dcu right and literally the dude's had the job like what three months like i don't <laughs> i don't think he has casting down yet like they're probably you know still going through through this figuring this out but he did say that you know casting uh, is what matters most is that the actor is easy to work with is one of the things he said so um that's shot cool. across the bow for Ezra Miller, possibly. <laughs> yeah, could be, could be. I, you know, he he might not have. Yeah, you know, he may, he may have been hard to work with. I don't know. Um, yeah, I think that's more maybe a shot at uh, uh, Zack Snyder, um, and possibly what was the other the, the guy in Justice League, Cyborg, who who's complained about everything oh, since that movie. Ray Fisher. Yeah. Ray Fisher. Yeah. So uh, it could be them. Um, but he, you know, remember I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and say he said that we would have our first wave of announcements before the end of January, and we are less than two weeks away from this. Yeah. So. I mean, I know James Gunn does not listen to our show, but we publish it for free out there on the internet, so there is a chance that he could listen, and I would like to give him one piece of advice, and that is the age-old adage for the internet, uh, and that is just don't tweet. I mean, it's getting to the point where I feel like he's humoring the audience maybe a little bit too much and being a little too approachable. I think he should just let his work speak for himself. Like, just, uh, I'm sure the, 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 you are getting countless notifications at all seconds of the day. So at this point in time, you might as well just turn off the notifications on Twitter. They shouldn't even really matter to you anymore. And I would just say, like, just, just stop just stop making announcements and stop doing these things on the internet. Like you, like you have now elevated to a new echelon in Hollywood where you are now too important to just like take the time to do any of this kind of stuff. So Mm -hmm. just put the phone down, just let it all to like the, the PR and marketing department of the studio that you run now and everything will be fine. It's worked well for Feige. It's worked well for other people that have run studios. That's just in my opinion. I I just, I see it going down a road that does not end up being healthy for the fandom in the future. So I, I just put out your first movie your first project that you're in charge of on the DCU, uh, I'm sure it'll be great, and then we won't have to worry anymore. Yeah, I'm just kind of going through. Just, you know, he's not posting every day, so I, I get yeah, you know, that's a good sign, right? Like he's just putting out things every once in a while. Um, to me, you know, again, he was uh, fired from Marvel for for his older tweets, so I think maybe he is being more cautious, if you will, right, about some of his stuff. But um, you know, he he is out here. I guess I wouldn't say doing the rock thing. He's promoting everything he's doing, right? He's got Peacemaker. He's got you know DC stuff on HBO, HBO Max. You know he's got his Guardians thing coming up through here. So yeah, he's 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 doing a lot doing that, and it's 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 fun to see. I'm I'm glad he is you know at least talking to his fans, and he's not encouraging. Um, like you said, like he's not they're not doing the Snyderverse thing, right? Like he's not encouraging. I'm just telling Bad you, it's behavior. just it's just going to take one tweet, right? Where yeah. maybe he hasn't had his coffee in the morning. Maybe some random crazy fan has said something that just rubs him the wrong way. He's going to tweet something with just the wrong phrasing or the wrong like verb and everyone's going to be like freaking out and he's just going to be like I shouldn't have tweeted I should have just left the phone down so that's that's my he, plea to him he's done he has done nine ten ten tweets that I can count this month uh and most of them are uh celebrating catter day if you will he has a cat <laughs> that he likes to post so I, 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 I lean I don't think I don't think he'll go go off that, that rail but you know at the same time I just want to know what he's doing like I'm excited to hear what he's going to be announcing right like hey they've got a plan they, they've made this let's hear what the first phase is we have no DC movies lined up for 2024 yet on our, our plate maybe the Joker um, I, I haven't looked into that too much but I don't really count that right that's not the DCU proper so uh, if he's gonna if we're gonna hear anything out of James Gunn by the, by next week I really hope it's like hey Here's what we're doing next year for you guys. Let's let's kick yeah. it off. Yeah, hopefully we'll be talking about it on next week's episode. Yeah, I tell you who's been talking to him, 
my man, Jason Momoa. <laughs> I guess your man. He said that to you. Uh, he had a video that he posted online that praises James Gunn, Peter Safran, and David Zaslav. So it sounds like he had a meeting with them. He said he was referencing when he went and talked to him four years ago. Um, I, I don't know what four years ago. Aquaman started filming a lot longer than that. So yeah, I, I don't. Maybe, maybe I don't know it what was he's talking a, about. a sequel, or I don't know. Maybe yeah, the success of the first movie, maybe. Um, but uh, yeah, so he has this big long video where he just kind of talks about him and he's very hyped and yelling woo. So I uh, couldn't really pull anything out of it. You can get that link in our, our notes. But the other thing is, you know, people are asking him, and you know, he's saying he's like, I'll always be Aquaman. And, uh, and later in that same sense, he said, I can play other things too, referencing the DC universe. So is this his Lobo reference? Is this, is this what everyone's up in arms <laughs> about? Like, you know, oh my gosh, I'm- Jason Momoa's going to play Lobo and Aquaman. I feel like I'm looking at it almost as like, this is like almost like a chopping block, right? Where you find out at the office, they're doing layoffs and every, all of your coworkers have these individual meetings set with the boss and you're all kind of looking at them as they walk out the door after their meeting. Oh, was it a good meeting or a bad meeting? Have they fired? Uh, or have they fired them or are they coming back? Right. This kind of feels like a more high class situation like that. Like maybe, you know, Momoa is going into this meeting going like, Oh, are they going to can me? Are they canning Aquaman three? Are they pressing forward with this new DCU? You know, what, what's going to happen? So he goes in there maybe thinking he's kind of like, quote unquote, getting fired. Then he's like, no, we want you to be Lobo. We're not going to do any more Aquaman because we're, we're shifting this whole universe, but we can use you in other things. And he's just like, all right, my man, I didn't get fired. And then he makes a hype video when he leaves the meeting i guess he's doing both they like they might they might give him an aquaman 3 right but like it'll be a james gunn aquaman 3 um because i feel you know in, in theory you watching the first one um it's not really tied to zack snyder's right like remember how like mara even has a different accent in in each movie like zack snyder's <laughs> versus that and like the air the, like they can talk underwater but in zack snyder's movie they had to make the air bubble kind of thing mm-hmm. um so i feel like they could continue along the roads I, I you know i think they're gonna they're building relationships with these actors to do as much as they can as, as as frequently as they can we talked about this last week right on netflix or maybe we didn't talk about maybe i talked to somebody else this week netflix did like a preview of their upcoming movies right this year mm-hmm. it's the same actors in every fucking movie like <laughs> literally everything they they, they had the same actors and you know, um, you know, Eleven from Stranger Things is now doing, you know, an action horror film, and you know, um, Henry Cavill keeps coming back, and all these other people. So I'm like, yeah, they they they're trying to build, I guess, a, a roster of repeatable, you know, actors that they can bring in monies. But um, if they want to do Lobo with Jason, I don't, care. you know, I, you probably agree. I, I don't care. Just do it. Make it good. As long as it's good, I don't mm-hmm. care who's playing the character at the end of the day. Just, right? Like, yeah, I, I, I feel like at this point in time with the DC, I'm not worried about like the minor, you know, macro uh, details, if you will. I'm just like, turn this. Don't just like turn the ship around. You gotta like dig it up from the bottom of the ocean and mm-hmm. patch it and put it. New... Jack Sparrow, that shit. This is yeah, your black put girl. It... <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You got to uncurse the ship. You got to go collect all the coins. Mm-hmm. Like I, that's what I'm worried about. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and and honestly, you know, if it's not the the mainstay characters, right? Like if it's not Wonder Woman, if it's not Aquaman, that's fine. You know, Marvel did fine building up their C and B list characters for a long time, and you know, James Gunn brought literally the C list Guardians of the Galaxy, who only had like maybe two series ever, and his iteration was only the second series. Uh, to to the spotlight right now, everyone knows who Star Lord is and Rocket and Groot. So, uh, huge huge opportunity for them to do do fun things over there and have have a great time. Um, I want to talk about the Flash, Mike. I, the Flash movie is is I want to watch it just to get it out of the way and see what this <laughs> thing is. Right, like I want to know what's going on. Why was this thing delayed for ten years? What Ezra Miller is going on here? We got Michael Keaton returning. My, uh, Ezra Miller's playing two different characters from the trailers. There's a Supergirl and a Zod. And I'm like, God, this thing has... This movie is wild. It has everything in it from every every direction going on. Um, and as such, we don't know really who the villain is, right? At the end of this day. We, ha- we haven't seen anything. We haven't seen trailers. We know the trailer is coming to the Super Bowl uh, next month, uh, the weekend before Ant-Man. Um, but toys are starting to come out, right? You go to the store, you start to see toys. And what do toys have? all the characters in them mm-hmm. uh, and the flash um has uh four characters uh mentioned on the back there's batman the flash the other flash and what appears to be the villain 
and this may be spoilers for some. If you don't want to know who the villain is, you can skip ahead. We use time codes for everything, Mike. But I see you've clicked on this link. I see your cursor Mm -hmm. has clicked on this link. I'm looking at this image. (laughs) And um, spoilers again. Boy, they're just pulling one right out of the TV show playbook here with the Dark Flash. Like three flashes and a Batman. What what's going on? Well, yeah, I, I had to uh, I had to look into it real quick because I was like, well, no, the Savitar is different from where I was watching in the CW. So I had to look it up. And when the Dark Flash enters the CW show, I, I believe I stopped watching at that point in time. So, so I, I don't think I've seen this iteration this was, of this it. This was uh, season two of the flash oh oh so it's the other way around it's been so long since yeah. I've seen it. i <laughs> yeah. have forgotten about it <laughs> yeah so so this is the one that was remember i think it was season, like he's always running and like there's always like a black like zombie looking one chasing him around this is the zombie like speed uh, force yeah. okay i'm looking at some more shots from the cw show it's looking okay it's looking a little bit more familiar yeah. so um so yeah so he i believe he it's tied to savitar but like he's hunting down savitar as well because they're they're also, you know, mm-hmm. trying to to stop things. So, well, I think there's the, the bigger takeaway from this image here is uh, what's captioned as uh, the Flash Young Barry, yeah, because it, it's where you finally get to see a, kind of another look at the Batman cowl yeah. with uh, the Flash kind of icon Paint. spray painted over it, and this toy looks super goofy. So they I don't all know. do that. The, the the Flash in the upper right, his neck is like a giraffe, man. Oh look at yeah. That. Yeah, so but I mean the Batman, he doesn't look too bad. Oh, they've been the making way, those toys for molded. thirty years, Mike. Yeah, That's they got that down. Batman. Yeah, those those factories across seas got that down to a science. The yeah. Dark Flash has some sort of like crystalline structure kind of, kind like of a, coming up. Like a doomsday mixed with a flash and then like Yeah. You know, like, I mean it looks it looks spooky. Like I'm trying yeah. to imagine it translating from plastic to right. the big screen and it could be cool. Yeah, absolutely, and I, I think there, there's opportunity there because both of those berries, even though it's the same actor, right? They're both played by as real. Like they, their faces both look different, right? Um, so uh, this dark flash, the toy's not representative of it, but it is, you know, disappointing to know there are three flashes in this uh, movie, um, and and you know, not that the, the TV show literally has done everything, so there's nothing new they could possibly put in here <laughs> other than include this Batman. But I, I really want to see him in action, but. You know, I, I was hoping for something else, but it's fine. We'll take it, right? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not losing sleep over the Flash movie this year. Um, Agree. By, by any means, uh, let's talk uh, Tron Three called Tron Ares. I don't know why they call it Ares. Um, it hasn't been explained yet, but it is moving forward. This three cool is moving forward at Disney with Jared Leto starring. Woo! <laughs> Disappointment. Alarm. We've been talking about this since 2017. I went and looked up our notes when they first announced this. Um, that Jared Leto was pushing for Tron 3 at Disney. It was 2017, so we are in our sixth year of talking about this movie, and it is officially moving forward. The fandom around Tron is so interesting to me, right? Because me and you, Chris, we are are too young in order to kind of be um, amazed and dazzled by the original Tron. You know, we can definitely respect what it's done, right? Absolutely. You know, and and we can watch it and kind of appreciate even, like, the quirkiness of it now and kind of like, oh, you know, they were trying their best back then, and this was a... This was amazing. They were, yeah, they were pioneering, <laughs> you know, visual effects at the time, and, as we exactly. saw. Exactly. And then, you know, our current generation got the sequel that is mainly, primarily remembered for maybe kind of like the first de-aged scene. Maybe not the first, but the maybe the most the eyeballs yeah. on a de-aged actor. And then, of course, the, the Daft Punk soundtrack. The right? Daft Punk, nobody, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody <laughs> really, really remembers the movie for anything else. You know, it was kind of neat, you know, Olivia Wilde was a program that came into the real world so at least they you know tried to do something clever with it so really there's not a whole lot to be loved here but i am curious where it goes right you know i would say the status quo of, of aesthetics for tron would be the last tron movie that came out so i don't imagine a big visual overhaul but who knows? Maybe if they go into like a different type of system or computer program, you know, maybe things look a little different. Maybe well, it's a little <laughs> less blue, neon. Maybe it shifts to a different color. Well, I don't know. It po- possibly could be. You know, maybe they're bringing over the Morbius effects guys. There's more clouds and. <laughs> hey, and, and those nebulous. effects are cool. I, I know, that's I, not even a joke. Not, I would be okay with that. I, well, right, but it'd be different in there. You know, we are doing cloud computing, Mike. Huh? 
Huh? <laughs> oh God. Uh, this okay. Is, so this is like this is like Wreck It Ralph levels of puns here for this this internet stuff here. But yeah. So Jared so Leto, how do we feel about Jared Leto? Yeah. I don't love I don't love him. I never have liked this guy in anything he's ever done. Um, my favorite scene in Fight Club is when he just gets the shit beat out of him, right? Like uh, oh. by by the by the main character. So like I don't love him. He he has tied himself to a lot of old properties that have been renewed. Right? You've not seen Blade Runner twenty forty nine, but he is a a main character in that. Um, mm. You know, he's done Morbius. What else has he done that's, you know, tied to, a, again, that that's come out well, you know, recently? I mean, right? I don't really have any ill will towards Jared Leto as a, as a person. Uh, I do think it's funny that he's reached a point where we can make fun of him when it comes oh. to his hard kombucha or his role as oh, Morbius. Yeah. I, I am working my way right now through American Psycho. Um, I oh, had yeah. never seen it before, so yeah. I think I'm I'm watching it in chunks, and uh, he is he is so baby, he's such a baby in it that I didn't even recognize him at first when he was on screen. And I suppose if you don't like Jared Leto, this is a movie to watch because he gets <laughs> yep. axed by yeah, Christian Bale in the movie very brutally. I mean, it, the camera cuts away, so you don't yeah. get to see it, but it's implied. Um, so yeah, I don't have any ill will towards him. So he is not like a oh the Joker. He, is, he was the fucking Joker. God damn! I was like, uh, what? What do I hate him? For the most is relevant to this podcast, the Joker. I don't blame him for that. Though. I do. They He's let, not the one no. that pitched the so, tattoo. So on his I think he has done amazing work in the late '90s, early 2000s. Right? He had a, a an emo rock band that did really well in the early 2000s, and people stopped telling him no. And, <laughs> and, and when they stop telling you no, what happens? You become full of yourself and think you can do anything. And I think that's where he is. I, I literally think that's where he is because. He did. He did. What was a House of Gucci where he wore the makeup and pretended to be the old Italian man. <laughs> uh, so, like, it, but I, I totally believe the Joker is his fault. I believe they. He it was his idea pitching it, and he was sending <laughs> those used condoms to people on, on like his his co act co. Oh, whatever. I, for, I forgot about that story. That's knows? him. That's nobody else doing <laughs> that. So, anyway. Um, Back to what you were saying. I, I, I don't, it's not him personally, but I think he he has reached. You know, we we should be concerned about his involvement in this, but he could he could swing the other way, right, and come out the other side just fine in a trauma yeah. movie. I mean, I don't know if it's been clarified whether he's going to be the protagonist or antagonist. He's just set to star in it, so mm-hmm. uh, we'll yeah. see, we'll see how it goes. He'll make but himself, yeah, he'll make himself the. the Another the Tron movie. Yeah. I guess those uh, the light cycle ride that's hitting Disney World um, yeah. uh, here in America has yes. a little bit more staying I, power. I've it. seen it, and I've seen it work, and that thing looks really cool with the light cycles because they were doing the demo runs on it, like nobody on it. Uh, mm-hmm. And I was taking the people move around, and the way like it works up and down, and it's actually a game. The point is to, while you're writing it, you're getting points for your teams um, as well because you're like doing mm-hmm. the, the red versus, or the blue versus yellow. And I believe this is in already in. What did I say? Was it Disney Japan? I believe they believe mm-hmm. they've already they've already have it. So you can see, go go on YouTube and see how that works over there. It's, it, it looks really cool. It's in Tomorrowland, right next to Space Mountain. It's the most modern looking thing there. It looks awesome. But um, w- w- I'm gonna butcher this name. He is Swedish. It's, it's like uh, Joaquin Ronig um, is rumored to direct the movie. He um, co-directed the last Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Um, with with somebody else, and he also solo directed the Maleficent Mistress of Evil, so he has got his foot in the door in Disney by mm-hmm. by a long shot. So um, I don't think you know. If I'm going to be honest, both those movies extremely CGI heavy, and you mm-hmm. don't think about the CGI when you watch them, right? I, I think that's a if they're going to do anything with Tron, hopefully that's it. Uh, Invincible, Mike. Did you watch this video? I don't. I forgot to tell you this is a video here uh, for, yeah, for Invincible. I, yeah, I did. Uh, I, I would say a PSA for it. It, it yep. landed in my timeline because people were kind of using this promotional video for season two of Invincible as like a benchmark for what the animation is going to look like in uh, season two. It and looks I, like I lower to... quality, maybe? Um... Uh, well, no, I mean, no, people were... I mean, the animation quality in this promo is very, very good. I, I liked it. But well, this is not going to be what season two looks like on every single frame, right? This is a promotional video that was put together, I'm sure, by a separate team just to promote uh, the next season. Yep. And uh, you could tell they, they had to put something together, right? Because the show's not done. And that's what they say in this, right? They're like, hey, uh, the season's uh, not ready yet, but should hopefully come out at some point in time this year. 
can't give you an exact date and I have no footage to show you. It's so very, we're gonna hide. It, it's very meta, right? It's, it's like, mm-hmm. it's like it's sitting with um, Alan, the alien and him and they're like at a restaurant or, yeah, and he's like, so when, when, when's it coming? And then he's like, well, we gotta do all this stuff. And it literally like does the meta thing where it like breaks down, like, you know, the, the sketches, the storyboards, to the pre sales, mm-hmm. the voice recording, the, and all the stuff, like every, you can kind of peel back the layers, right. And see the, that, and that was really cool to see that with Steven, uh, young, um, doing the the voice and then uh, seth rogan is alan as well I don't, mm-hmm. uh, if, if people don't remember that so i thought it was cool i thought it was really fun right like yeah. to, to be meta and, and you know invincible it's it's a hyperbolic series right as well like in terms of like the violence and the like this i guess the super people in this world so mm-hmm. I, I i i'm excited to know it, but it is late 2023 like everyone's going to have to be wait a little bit longer for this, this show to come out. Yeah. So. It's funny. People always complain about wait times, but then, you know, when there's a filler scene, right. in invincible where, you know, they're not doing like 60 frames per second, crazy high intense actions. Like, Hey, come on. It's just like, well, you wanted them yeah. to come out with this next season uh, sooner rather than later. And, so, and I believe they also did season three at the same time, right? They, they greenlit two and three. So they mm. could do all the voice acting and get the actors in, and then do all the animation um, mm. as well. So I believe the the wait for season three will be much shorter. In the, in yeah, the possibly. Possibly. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I had a great time with the first season. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's uh, it's always an interesting guttural body experience to be watching something that goes from like zero to ten and yeah. violence wise, right? It's always like, whoa, okay, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it pulls literal and, and, and metaphorical no punches in, in that regard so uh, if you're looking for some it, I, I just can't wait for the invincible memes to come out like all the memes that came out of that first <laughs> season like literally oh my god they were all over the place uh, Chris so. talking about memes I know I, I was just talking about um, American Psycho like, oh, yeah. not, I'm like halfway through the movie and the first half has been memed like already yeah. I was I already knew everything that had happened already because of memes <laughs> yeah it's been memed to death so yeah invincible season two uh, late 2023. All right, let's jump into our last topic for the day. Our last topic for the day is The Last of Us. The uh, series has debuted on HBO Max with the first episode. Mm -hmm. The second episode just dropped 40 minutes ago, Mike. I um, saw the notification on Chris Licks that it has been (laughs) downloaded to watch. Even though I have HBO Max, I still like to to pull it in there. Um, And real quick, I just want to jump into this. It is the second biggest debut on HBO Max since um, 2010, with the first being The House of Dragon. Uh, House of the mm-hmm. Dragon is that right? House of the Dragon, mm-hmm. um, uh, which was I think what last year, early last yep. year or late last year. Either way, so um, you know, huge, huge call for people who are fans of this game series, um, the original, the remake, and the sequel, uh, all on PlayStation uh, three. Is it threes and fours? PlayStation three and fours, where both of these exist. Or, three, four, yeah, and, and, and five. The, the five theoretically five, yeah. yeah. And that's so, that's great poll. That's great numbers, especially from something that is a video game property. Yeah. Even though video games can be some of the best selling and most profitable forms of media, that mm-hmm. still doesn't mean there is enough there to necessarily transcend to, I would say, yeah. the broader consumer market, right? And, so. and if you try to duplicate, you know, there, there's a lot of games that are like story games, right? Like you're, you're playing a movie is what it feels like. Even mm-hmm. if you translate that one for one, sometimes that just doesn't work, right? It, it just it loses the luster. And um, I, I, I'm again, I've not played the games, but I do know I've seen articles on like here are the differences between the show and the mo- the movie or the series, mm-hmm. and no one seems to be complaining. It's just pointing them out, right? Like here, here's some things that you may notice along the way. Yeah, I um, I chatted with a friend today about this first episode of The Last of Us, and they are a Last of Us super fan. They have played both games with the kind of a spinoff bonus content many times. They have a Last of Us tattoo. They they are all up in this and uh, flying uh, of flying colors. Uh, big uh, big ups, thumbs up. Great reviews for the first episode from them. They're very much looking forward to watching the second episode tonight. Uh, from my point of view, from somebody that just played each game once, so just very casual fan, enjoyed it as well. 
Uh, my wife had a good time and she has been exposed to the story because she's like, oh, is this that game that you play that I watch you play sometimes? And I was like, yeah, it's that one with like the, the kid and the guy. And she's like, oh, okay. So she was a little familiar with it. So it was kind of fun watching it through her eyes because it was a little new for her, but she was familiar enough to know kind of what was going on. But yeah, we, we all mm-hmm. had a, a great time with the first episode. Um, great. It's a great it's it's a great to revisit the game through a new TV show because it's been so long since I played the first one. I get reminded of things in the game that I forgot about watching the show. So that just means the adaptation is being very faithful. And I also like that they added, Chris, I don't know, you might not necessarily know about this when it comes, since you haven't played the games, but um, the the shows start off in a similar way where you meet our characters before the kind of like apocalypse comes through, yeah. and it's about Joel and his uh, daughter. And uh, the the video game, if, if I recall correctly, starts off the night that the yeah. apocalypse so, is happening. Yeah, I, I I did go down the the rabbit hole looking up the the differences, right? Uh, just because mm-hmm. I I don't know, and I'm I'm coming at this, you know, completely. I guess I wouldn't say sterile, but like very removed from the storyline, right? Other than mm-hmm. the, the drama around this. So yes, I did see that. That is like the character of Sarah, his daughter Sarah. Um, yeah. For people who don't know, it's not Ellie. Um, it's not his daughter. Sarah is given a lot more time, from what I hear, in exactly. the, the show than, than the and, game. And and this is the essence, I believe, of what Craig Mazin was talking about on Twitter the other week when he said there is, there are differences between TV shows and video games, and you have to find a way to make death more impactful. And, you know, people were giving him some crap for it, which I thought was a little unfair. But this is what they're talking about, right? When you get to actually embody the character and move the character around, play his daughter in the video game you you're almost ingrained and connected to her physically instantaneously right when you move your joystick you move the character around so when she dies later on in the game right you feel so much more connected and immersed to it so now how do you translate that to a tv show that you're just sitting on your couch watching well one thing that helps is just give us more time with her right mm-hmm. let's let, let's see her being kind to the and neighbor you, you, well you, you know, build that a, you build that relationship right like she's a real person yeah. with doing real things um and i i don't believe i i can't confirm was the the show wasn't this this show was set during her quote quote um i guess um Joel's birthday. I don't know if that was same in the game or not. Yeah, it, it might have been. I don't remember the exact finer details then, but it it could have been. But either way, the broader strokes were there, and then they added to those strokes to make it feel more impactful because we don't get to interact with any of the any of the story. It just has to be shown to us. So, like so far, everything is just uh, I not even cautiously optimistic. I am I am nothing but optimistic for how the adaptation is is going so far. I love Pedro Pass. Scal, uh, he fit really, really well into the character. Um, yeah, the casting was just great so far. So yeah, I'm, I'm having a great time. Chris, what, what did you, I, I, I'll stop talking. What did what did you think about it from somebody that doesn't really know much about the story? Yeah, try, trying to re- remove myself from that. Um, I, I have one huge complaint, <clears throat> and it's not the show directly, like the whole episode. It's one thing that they always do in any apocalypse movie. Hey, we've slowly been giving you the signs of the apocalypse about the 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 day, right? For this person, mm-hmm. so literally when the, the 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 TVs like stay inside, lock your doors. What's the first thing this fucking girl does? She goes <laughs> outside to return a dog to their neighbor. I'm like, I hate when they do, like. I literally hate when this. And then she's like, Oh, there's blood on the floor. I need to creep my way into this house you know, and, and get closer to the action. Yes, it builds tension. Yes, it builds this. But every apocalyptic show does this. And, like, that, to me, that's, like, a huge red flag out the game. I'm like, stop doing this. Like, literally find better ways to do this because the same thing over and over again is just predictable. And you're, you're I'm, I'm, I'm literally saying, I'm like, this stupid woman, go back in the house. Just go back in the house. Just, just Chris, go back you in must, the house. you must not underestimate the stupidity of uh, teenagers in a crisis. Yeah. So, they will always do the worst thing possible. We've all yeah, been there. And the last thing, I, you know, I, I, I'm not going out into my neighborhood to look around anything. Like, you know, if I hear loud noises, I'm just I'm just getting up. I'm hiding. I'm going to my basement. <laughs> I'm getting away. But, you know, that's my biggest red flag. And that is my biggest complaint. The rest of it is a, is a, is a good show. I, I can't say I'm in love with it yet, right? Because I don't have that affiliation mm-hmm with the characters across two video games that, that you do, right? But, mm-hmm. you know, watching, you know, again, Pedro Pascal, 
Um, I, I don't know the actor's name, so we're going to go into, I believe, his uh, smuggling partner, Tess. Is that her name? Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, you know, great. The, um, you know, really kind of quick to show um, the, uh, the fi- I don't know if the Fireflies carry big in the show either, or the games either. I don't know if they have anything or if that's built for the show. I, I enjoy the, the main character and the leader of the Fireflies for that. And, um, you know, hey, here's a journey. You're, the goal is take this girl to this post and you'll get the stuff you need. Of course, shit's going to go sideways. It's all going to go wrong. So it was very, yeah. it's, it's good to be there at the end of the first episode and not spend forever within the walls of the sanctuary city, if you will. Yeah. A great fun factoid, which you may already know, Chris, because you're just a repository for factoids, whether you need to have them or not. <laughs> but the, uh, the actress that is playing the uh, leader of the Fireflies is the voice actress that did that same character in the video game. And uh, she talked about it in the uh, the kind of inside addition to the episode that plays at the end of the uh, the HBO stream, where she said she was lucky enough that she was able to age into the character. So <laughs> she has now reached the age after the, you know the games have been made and published where she could be the role. So yeah. that is pretty it, cool. That was like, oh yeah, yeah. this this feels like her because it is her. <laughs> and and, and Mar- Marlene, is that right? Am I saying? Is that her name? I think, was that I, I think, yeah. I think so. I, I will, throughout the weeks as we review yeah. this show, I will never be the one that is going to be an expert on this game. I've yeah. just played them casually twice and had a good time. So, so. I will say the one thing, uh, I, it did take me out a little bit. The guy who plays um, Robert, the, the uh, I guess the thug, right? Or I guess the guy who, who tries to sell his battery twice. He mm-hmm. was in Violent Night. I'm like, God, that guy looks really familiar. Oh, was he? I he, don't remember. <laughs> he, he is. He is the Cramp. He, his codename is Cramp. Is in Violent. Night. He's like the oh, the short yeah. dude who goes crazy. I'm like, I'm like, ah, oh, that's what he is. But I mean, yeah, that's beside the show. But yeah, I, I I enjoy the pace. I enjoy you know building the characters. I just really hated. I, I like loathe the like that the that part of the apocalypse because I'm like everybody does this. Like I really really don't like this. Um, pick something different, but everything else was felt, you know, fun. I, I'm aw- anxiously awaiting the arrival of the clickers. Um, oh you know, yeah, in full I force. think I think I think in tonight's episode we're getting some because they're kind of out into the world, exploring outside of the walls. So I think we should be getting some clicker yeah. action and, tonight. And obviously uh, the the introduction uh, in the 1960s with John Hanna as the person explaining to us that, you know, fungus can take over bodies. Oh, and yeah. Well, it that was, was a really great. fun little, little cameo from him. Yeah, I don't remember if that was included in the game, because if it was, it would have been at the very beginning, and I wouldn't remember it at all. Maybe this is still canon, but it was, like, included in, in like, tapes or notebooks or clipboards that you could find across the game that was, you know, optional to read. But it was very, very moving. And they were just like, oh, there's nothing to worry about with fungus. But if the planet got warmer uh-huh. and felt the need to adapt, and I was like, oh, shit, no, they got us. We're screwed. Well, it, so <laughs> it, 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 it's fun to have that like little retrospect because you know, the other guy was talking about, you know, viruses being contagious. And, you know, if it gets on an airplane and goes place, you know, we just literally came out of a pandemic, right, of, mm-hmm. of, of you know, COVID and everything. So it was yeah. interesting to, like, they didn't lean it. They mentioned it, like, you know, in, in you know, planes, but, like, to also be like, Actually, what we're going to talk about is fungus taking over and what it does <laughs> rather yeah, it than, felt than viruses. We- it felt weird without feeling pandering, right? Like, you yeah. know, sometimes you'll go to like a a new blockbuster movie and the, the mustache twirling villain just says like, just literally drops the word like, oh, climate change, climate change. And I'm not a climate change denier, but, you know, when you make a narrative around this very real world fact, you have to have like a little bit more, you know, finesse to it. So I liked the finesse that they included at the beginning. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I think what I what I said, you know, to to listen to the show and friend of mine, Patrick, he he he's a big fan of the games. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And we were talking about, you know, we, we both agree, like we like it. I'm not going to say I'm in love with it yet, right? It's episode one. This is your pilot episode. But it did Mm -hmm. get me enough in that I would watch an episode two, right? Like, I want to watch the next one and follow this. Um, And I absolutely believe I will way more than, like, the the, the 11th hour for next week's episode. Yeah, Um, And I feel like I don't need to go to bat for this show. It's going to be successful and popular no matter what any of us do. But I would say, as a reminder, so many of your favorite shows out there in the world, just in general always start off a little slow right like i i would i wouldn't be surprised if people are just like all right i'm finally diving into game of thrones after hearing all this hype 
I don't really think the first episode is really all that engaging. It's like, yeah, the kid falls off off the roof, but that's like nothing compared to where the rest of the show goes after that, right? So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, all all the best stuff in the world builds. Yeah. So, and so the other bit I I caught of you know I caught you know I wouldn't say people are it's not discourse it's really just more of a question like there's the idea of spores in the game is that right mm-hmm. and that's how you get infected is through the spores um yeah and it really what it boils down to is they just wanted a mechanic in the video game where you had to get a gas mask right so yeah. and they're just segments in the game where you have to be a little bit more careful make sure you have like this mask to get through it so and they even they talk about that as well at in in the kind of uh, wrap up episode at the end where the creators are talking about these masks and it's just yeah it's just the, this is the point right the point is the the virus and the pandemic or the spores or whatever the the cat's already out of the bag Pandora's box has already been opened so they're already out there in the world right so now it's just just be careful. Uh, it seems like they're leaning towards like the biting thing, which is what what it was in the video game too. It was just like you just don't want to get too close to the problem, mm-hmm. right? And that was always been kind of like the general concept, right? So yeah, yeah. And, and, and I think one of the and, and this will be my last bit here, and I, I would say it is a bit spoilery uh, for those who haven't seen it. Is there is a scene um, where it looks to be like a feral child ends up in the quarantine zone mm-hmm. or up to the quarantine zone, and then. They do the the test and it turns red in the background, um, and I noticed that. And then, but like the lady's demeanor changes to like very, very like, you know, excited and thrilled, right? Like she's like, oh, and you kind of find out they, they the kid was infected. They had to literally put him down, and you find in the next scene where you find Joel twenty years later, you know, burning infected bodies. And I'm like, that. I mean, I'm like, I saw the red. I'm like, that can't be good, can it? But she, her actions are telling me otherwise yeah uh, this this and, and is really a, caught this my is a, wife off guard as well i was like oh yeah yeah this the the bottom line is this is a, a ruthless world right the only yeah. sort of like law or government that exists is totalitarian because unfortunately it's kind of the only thing that you can do to keep people safe in a in something that's this dangerous is just to go full on though you, you are not allowed to go outside and if you do we have to kill you type of thing so yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I yeah. get it, and, and it's brutal. And there's only more and more, like, just, like, depressing stuff to come. But also yeah. really, really cool stuff as well. Yeah, yeah, I mean, a- action was good. I mean, it sounded good as well, right? You know, when, when you're watching, uh, like, a horror action thing, you want the sound to be good. And I, I think the sound mix was effective, right, for, for everything kind of mm. going on. So, yeah, I, like I said, I've got no huge complaints of the story, just a couple initial things where, you know, you... you 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 fall into a trope and you do it, but like I, I I very much look forward to watching the second episode sooner than later. So yeah, anything else? Nope. No. Uh, stay tuned. Stay subscribed. We we might not talk about The Last of Us every single week, but heck, yeah. if we're if we're really digging it, we might. Yep. yep. Nine, uh, eight more weeks. So episode mm. two today goes through nine episodes, and obviously you can check out the game on uh, any PlayStation console you might have that probably still works. Uh, <laughs> Um, but yeah, you can check that out. So anyway, so Mike, people know what you're up to, what you're doing, where can they find you at my man? They can find me at Mike Royer design on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, And you can read my web comics at pickledcomics.com. Mm-hmm. Chris, if people want to catch up with you, where oh, can they yeah. find you? You can find me on <clears throat> Instagram, fall in 87. Sorry. I had a cough there or uh, Twitter fall in V A L D A N. If people want to know about our show, what we're doing, come back next week for our next, uh, round of, uh, uh, movie and TV news where I can get all that good information at. Oh, obviously, head on over to superhero slate dot com that is the best place to find all the avenues we host our show and to get our awesome show notes and upcoming release calendar two very useful tools if you are fans of all of the things that we talk about here on the show you can find us on apple Podcasts, youtube spotify wherever else you love to listen to find podcasts like us on facebook follow us on twitter and instagram and get merch at superhero slate.com slash store we love hearing from you reach out let us know what you're watching what you're listening to uh what you're playing and rolling in your latest mm. D&D game. I don't oh, know. There's oh, other things don't, outside don't eat, of TVs and movies, oh right? Oh, my now. God. Don't even get started on D&D. Have you heard the, the, the everything with that going on, with the new... Wait, 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 what? So, yeah. So, Dungeons <laughs> & Dragons operates called an open gaming license, right? So, if you okay. buy if you buy the books, you can make whatever 
like anything that you create for the game is yours to own. Like you, you can do whatever okay. you want with it. Well, there's called D and D one, which is like the next generation of Dungeons and Dragons. Like where it's supposed to be like you only have to buy. You know, we're not creating sixth edition, seventh edition, whatever. Well, Wizards mm-hmm. of the Coast was like, okay, well, here's this new license agreement. So anything you create, we will actually own at the end of the day. You'll have to like pay us a royalty if you create your own stuff. And like Ooh, the whole D and D community. They were like, you didn't realize that we don't need your books to make our own game. Like, we have our own imaginations, and we've been running this for, like, 40 years, 50 years. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't need you to do this. And they have been, um, not just Wizard, but, like, the D&D, the people who made it, I don't think had any ill will. I think there's, like, executives who are like, how can we milk this for more money above them Mm -hmm. telling them what to do? So, like, the D&D people, they're running the company, they're like, we don't want this, you know, as much as you do. Um, So they're trying to walk back and and literally repair relationships with the community because of this this week. So Uh, um, that's probably why it was on your mind, probably crossed your your Twitter feed at some point, you didn't read it, but, like, uh, (laughs) D&D has been in the news and not a good way lately. So there's your fun end of the show uh, factoid for you, Mike, that you didn't know. Yeah, you heard it from Chris, and that's why you stay till the very end of the episode to get those juicy little nuggets after we start wrapping up. But yeah. we love our super fans, so if you want to be a super fan of this show, all you got to do is share the show with a friend, share the show with a buddy, and we'll be here every week, folks. That's right. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to subscribe.